This is Karen Kuniyuki with the Emanuel School of Fine Arts. Today, I'd like to share with you a special tradition that happens in my house, and it comes from the country of Japan. In Japan, every springtime, right around May 5th, you will see carp banners or wind socks in the shape of fish hung over top of rivers and in parks and on streets and from the rooftops of apartment buildings and houses. And this is a really cool tradition that happens around Boys' Day, which is also called Children's Day. In Japan, the focus of this tradition was on male children with decorations and specially prepared food intended to ensure that our sons grew into healthy and prosperous adults. The festivals that surround Boys Day and Children's Day are rich in both indoor and outdoor decorations. One interior tradition started by members of the warrior class is the display of military symbols, such as dolls that are wearing armor decorative samurai helmets, and ornamental swords. The most prominent decoration for outside are large multicolored wind socks called koinobori, and they are designed to look like swimming carp. Carp are considered the strongest and most spirited of fish because they fight their way upstream against strong currents. The tradition of flying koinobori outside homes began as a way to honor the sons living within the home so that they would grow up healthy and courageous like a carp. They're sold in department stores and they come in different colors and when you display them you usually put the longest and biggest fish on the top of a flagpole and then the fish descend in their size each fish representing one person in the family. So you might have a mother fish, a father fish, and three baby fish, just like we have in our family, because we have five people. The supplies you'll need is a paper bag of any size, markers, scissors, glue, a pencil, and if you'd like to use paint, you can use paint as well. You'll need some string to hang your carp when you're all finished. It's time to make your own koinobori. You're going to start with your paper bag and scissors, and we're going to cut the paper bag open to reveal one large piece of brown paper to use for our project. So I open the bag and I cut down the narrow side right on the folds of the paper. And you do this on both sides of the bag. I'm using a large shopping bag, but if all you have is a small uh, lunch size bag, that's fine. If you have a white paper bag, that'll work too. Step two, I iron the, pa the paper bag. It just smooths out the wrinkles and makes it easier to draw and paint on it. It's not necessary for you to do this, but it takes just a second and I think it results in a better project. The next step is to paint the background of our project. And keep in mind that fish um, would not look one solid color. When fish move through the water, the light catches their scales and reflects and they have different shadows and highlights. So as I paint the background of my paper, I'm going to mix the colors. And I chose orange and yellow and I'm just going to put them both on the brush at the same time. And as I paint, I blend some areas and I get a nice variegated, uh, realistic looking background that has a variety of colors and blended 
values of those colors. You're going to paint as much of that paper bag as you possibly can only on one side. The next step is to create two eyeballs for your fish. Um, if you don't have any spare drawing paper around, you could easily use a discarded envelope from the mail to do this part. You could cut the envelope open and the inside of the envelope would be clean white paper to draw on. I use a Sharpie to create the pupil of the eye and I leave a little white fleck in each of my eyes. That's called a catch light and that catch light helps my fish look alive. It gives my fish's eye a little sparkle. Um, now I have a lot of art supplies at home, so you might want to skip some of these steps. I had a metallic silver kind of paint, and I just put a little bit of that metallic silver in the pupil to make it shine a little more. The next step, uh, if you want, is optional, and I'm going to show you how to make a fish scale stencil. And this will help me draw the scales on my cart banner and have the scales all uniform and looking the same size and shape. This is optional. You can hand draw your scales. You can just trace the circle of a lid to create scales and overlap them, but I just thought this was a pretty easy way to make a stencil. I'm using a heavy plastic cover. I just cut a small square off of an old notebook. Sometimes notebooks have a nice heavy plastic cover on them and that makes the perfect stencil. And then I use an X-Acto knife to just cut out some little shapes. Here are some general designs that I think look like fish scales. And you could use these designs to make a stencil. Now, you can use this stencil in a variety of ways. The first and the easiest way is what I end up using on my project. I trace my stencil with a marker and I fit my stencil like a puzzle piece, overlapping the shape to create that scale-like texture. You can also use a, sten a stencil to um, paint with. So, in this example, I'm putting the paint in the open spots of the stencil and then I'm just painting around the edge of the stencil to get the outside border. And last, you can paint the actual stencil and then stamp it down on the paper. This kind's pretty messy. Um, if you wanted to do this, you could probably use cardboard and fit a little cardboard handle on there and keep your hands cleaner or um, you can just go for it and get messy because that can be fun sometimes. But those are three different ways to use the same stencil concept. Now the next step is to flip your paper bag over. Uh, it should be dry. And with the paint side down, I folded the top edge of my paper bag twice to just create a nice clean edge. And that's where the mouth will be. And then I cut my eyes out of the paper because they are dry as well. And I use some glue to glue the eyes in place about an equal distance from the center of the bag. And then I grab my fish scale and I start tracing and overlapping my fish scale. I'm going to trace and overlap this design as far out to the edge as I can so that when I cut out the shape of my fish later, I have the absolute most of the paper to use for that. Um, if you were to stop your design short of the edge, then it might, it might look unfinished. 
So go out as far as you can with your fish scales. And then I went about three quarters of the way, a little bit more than half of the way across the paper bag with my scale design. And I left the rest of the bag blank to use for the tail. Now, once you have done this with marker, you could just leave it and, and, that, and be done. You could color it with marker also. I'm gonna show you um, just a couple of ideas of something that you could do with paint if you have paint at home. And I don't even use a paintbrush or worry about painting inside the lines. I use a Q-tip and create a pretty cool, colorful design. So I'm choosing a contrasting color. This is like a light baby blue. It really pops off of the orange. And with my Q-tip, I'm just putting a little dot of that baby blue paint in each of those circles that I just drew. Next, I'm gonna grab some maroon paint and another Q-tip. And I'm just putting some little streaks in between each of those um, markings that are on my scale and that just adds a little extra special something you can do as much of these embellishments as you want or you don't have to do any of them you can also complete the whole project with marker Then I take my stapler and if you haven't already, the side of the paper bag that you folded over to create a nice clean mouth, I staple six or seven times to hold it in place. And then if you have a hole punch, you can punch a few holes along that same edge. And by folding the paper bag over several times, you created a nice strong place to hang a string. It is a wind sock and it will get blown around in the wind. So you want to make sure you have uh, a nice thick edge there to attach the string. Now I'm taking my bag and I'm folding it in half, but I'm not creasing it down the middle. I don't want to press down that fold. I'm just lining up the outside edge and going out as far as I can with my pencil. I'm creating a general fish body and then the tail. And the overlaid picture you see there uh, marks the folded edge. You're not going to cut on that folded edge. You're only going to cut on your pencil lines. And I cut out the shape of the tail. And then I make the body a little narrow right where the tail meets the body. And then I go back outwards to make the body as fat as the paper will allow me to go. Then I'm going to take my fish and I'm going to create like a barrel with it. Um, if you need to, you could wrap this around a paper towel roll, um, like, a, like a roll of paper towel that has paper towel on it that would give you the general shape of the body. And then I staple that uh, in place right by my thumbs. And if you'd like to, you don't have to, you can glue down any loose edges. Um, sometimes a paper bag starts to peel away at the seams and if, if that bothers you, you can just slip a little glue on those seams and glue them down. But there's your general fish and he's going to swim away. <laughs> there he is. Um, he's all ready for string and he's ready to get hung up in our yard. Um, and he really catches the wind nicely. We hung him up with the rest of our koi banners. I have three sons and Boys Day has always been a very special holiday for us. I hope that you've enjoyed this art lesson and I hope that you'll share it with others so they can enjoy it as well. Boys Day is on May 5th Celebrate your children and celebrate this exciting Japanese tradition. Bye-bye.